And I'm seeing in my own life that dreams and realities are merging much more easily than they ever have before. I agree with that. It, sometimes time is going so fast. Days pass in a blink of an eye, and it seems that the dream state and the waking state are really starting to intertwine. Exactly. And I think that, the, you know, we, we often have had this experience, well, it's in my mind, therefore, as long as I don't express it, I don't see it. Well, I, what I'm seeing now is, uh, you could say, instant karma. <laughs> as soon as we think something, it happens. And I perceive that over the next few years, we're going to see uh, what we have described as the spirit world, which in some way we see as uh, un not seeable, not, uh, not so much connected to. I see those worlds now really becoming more interconnected. So people are going to be more aware of the spiritual world. And, and this is, a, is the gift that we're being given as there's never been any separation except for in our minds and, our, and sometimes in our hearts. Yes, I agree with this. And, and I feel that, you know, so many people spend their time thinking they're going out to all these imaginal realms. And I think that it's time for t to bring the spirit realm down onto the earth. Exactly. To really ground that level of our energy. And exactly. And, and I, I'm oh, sure you oh, both oh, have heard... I heard those words when take... people say, oh, well, that's spiritual and that isn't. <laughs> and, and right. I, you know, I'd like uh, to hang get on, your definition. <laughs> well, we're going to get your definition uh, when we get back. We're going to come back in a couple minutes. I'm Jay Widener. You're listening to Smoke and Mirrors. We're talking to the Christine Page, and you can go to her website at christinepage.com and Look at all the great stuff that she has, and she has a great book, 2012, and the Galactic Center, which is a great book. And we'll be right back. Thanks for listening. And we're back for another session with Christine Page. And uh, Sharon, did you have something that you wanted to uh, ask? Well, one of the wonderful things about your book has to do with your talking about the, the divine feminine, uh, the role of the feminine in this new era that we are entering, and uh, even how the alignment, uh, the galactic alignment, uh, is an expression of the feminine coming forth. Oh, yeah, I like that one, too. Yes, and I know that you have a you have a very similar thought as I do, Sharon. So it's delightful to have you here with me. As yes, well, to me, uh, I would like to see. As in all my research, it has to do with the fact that the women were, in many uh, traditional societies, the caretakers of what I refer to as the psychic, energetic, emotional landscape of society. Mm. The, that uh, level of intuition and healing, and even uh, the women were the caretakers. And so I'd like to uh, ask you about your vision of how this time will be affecting the divine feminine and women in general. Thank you. I did. I so admire your work, and I feel that I think we both agree that for many cultures, the galaxy itself was always seen as feminine. Uh, I feel that a lot of what I in my research when I was writing the book, it was so clear that there were very few cultures that believed that in the beginning was a masculine energy, and uh, most cultures see it as a oneness. The source was the great mother out of which came the feminine and the masculine that partnered her. And I feel that that returning to the great mother, the great source of everything, is what we're being given the opportunity to do now. And so for many cultures, the Milky Way, our galaxy, was the great mother. And this alignment that is happening on the 21st of December 2012 is so specific that there is this very close alignment uh, not just the, the fact that we're aligning, but it's closer than it's been for 26,000 years. And this is to the center of the galaxy, which is known as the heart of the Great Mother. And as I was working with this idea, 
it became very clear that it is through our heart resonating with the heart of the Great Mother that we will gain access to the ocean of possibilities that is the, is the source. And that's what's happening to my, in my mind over these years. And I think that many of us have uh, become aware that it is through the heart that this connection will be made. And for me, the divine feminine talks through the heart. She talks through, as you say, the power of intuition. She talks through the power of nurturing and celebration, harvest. And she talks through the heart of renewal. And I think that every, well, I know that every woman on this planet has had those cycles happen within her during her moon time, her menstrual cycles. And it, it is through the feminine that we know death and birth. It is the feminine that knows these cycles. And it is through the feminine, of course, within every man and woman. So this is not just purely for women. But it is for, for the feminine within everybody to wake up at this time and recognize that it is not through our masculine that we will be able to surf these ways of change. It is through the willingness to go into our heart and follow those signs that she so carefully lays out before us, especially to our intuition. I completely agree. In, in, when I was interviewing uh, Don Umberto for Time Wave 2013, he said that uh, America has great intelligence has a great mind, but now that gift, that intelligence, must be brought down to the heart. And that resonates with the ancient Egyptian uh, traditions and teachings that I've been really looking into these days, where they say we want to go beyond the cerebral intelligence to awaken the innate intelligence of the heart. Absolutely. And, and so much work, of course, is being done in this form, and we know how the heart's own energy in its vortex is 50 times more powerful than the mind or the brain. I should say the brain rather than the mind. And, and it isn't to say that we should not obviously pay attention to the brain or the ability to collect information. But when we are setting intention, the mind can only tell us what we have already experienced. It's the software where our heart will take us to places that we haven't been before. Our heart is the place that has the knowingness beyond our conscious awareness. And therefore, it just is a time to reach out and, what I would say, remember who we are as unique human beings. And it may just be a whisper. It may just be a feeling inside my heart that says, you know, I can't stop here. There has to be more that I'm here to be. And that willingness to stretch ourselves beyond what is known is, is needed at this time. I, I feel that what really has to happen is that we have to stop looking without for other people, you know, to save us, to heal us, and really start looking within. That's the path of the heart, to go deep within ourselves and find that level of love and truth oh, and absolutely. understanding. Absolutely. And I have to say, and often in my teachings, I will find myself saying, I really don't care how much you care for other people. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. This is how much you care for yourself. Because it is the lover within that has, is going to do the searching. And I, in the book, I look at Isis and Demeter, both great mothers who, in their love for their partner or for their daughter, Cyrus, Persephone, they were willing to search, to come down here and search for the lost beings, the lost parts of themselves. And that to Absolutely. me is our own journey, is have we enough love for ourselves to seek out those parts of us that are perhaps unfulfilled or unfinished or lost? And, and, just because we and Christine, we're going, to have, we're going to have to take a break there. Okay. I'm Jay Widener. Listen to Smoke and Mirrors, and we're talking to Christine Page, and we'll be right back. Thanks for listening. 